recording. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. All right, everyone, so welcome again. My name is Serafina Smith and I'm an assistant dean at the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences. We're so delighted that you're virtually joining us today to learn about the New Jersey Youth Institute, um, about how to get involved, what the, exactly the program is and what the program will look like uh, for the spring of 2021. I'm so glad, as I stated earlier, to see some familiar faces joining our session. So hopefully some of our, our teacher participant mentors would be um, would allow us to, to let them share a bit about their experience participating in the program in previous years towards the end of this presentation. So as I stated, myself and my colleagues, who I'll let them introduce themselves in a bit, we will go over the New Jersey Youth Institute. We'll talk about what exactly um, the program entails. Um, we'll talk about how students can get involved, how you as teachers or parents can support your students um, in your classrooms or your children to be a part of this initiative. We'll talk about the benefits of the program and all of the other pieces that are a part of the program in terms of our speaker series. And again, what the program will look like for the spring of 2021, as we're still kind of dealing with this virtual space um, and components. So I wanna pass it along to my colleague, Matt, um, to just start us off with the, to continue with the introductions as, and then we'll continue with the rest of the program. Thank you, Serafina. And it's nice to see so many of you on this, uh, webinar here this afternoon. So as Serafina said, my name is uh, Matthew Newman. I am a county-based 4-H agent. And I mean, I won't get into the, the nuances of what that entails other than to say that I um, work with and through volunteers to lead and direct a county-based youth development program on behalf of Rutgers University. And I'm really excited to be a part of this team. Marissa, Abby, correct me, is this year three, I believe, three or four? And as we wait for an answer, I'll actually pass it on to Abby, who can introduce herself and maybe answer that question. Um, hi, I'm Abby. I am the, um, the coordinator of the 4-H program up in Bergen County. Um, and I'm not sure. I thought four years, but it looked like Marissa put up five. So um, this is one of my favorite things that we do. I think it's just so inspiring listening to the teens come up with their ideas and learn about the issues across the world and, and even some issues here at home. Um, so I'm excited to, to see new people getting involved also. All right, Marissa. Hi, and I'm Marissa and I'm coming from the Essex County area. Um, and so the interesting thing is that Matt, Abby and Marissa, we support the kids who are on this call or any kids that you know that wanna participate in this program that are not associated with the school. So you don't have to be associated with the school to participate. You know, we'll mentor you through and help you help you um, get your papers done. And then a lot of our teachers here on this call, you know that it would be your role to mentor your kids, um, your classes through this project to get them to attend the National Youth in or the New Jersey Youth Institute in March. Uh, Laura. Yes, hi, my name is Laura Mitchell and I work in the Office of Academic Programs in the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences. I've been uh, co-coordinating the New Jersey Youth Institute for probably this is, I don't know, Sarah, this is what, like third third year? I think I can't even remember. It's yeah, like third you've, or fourth been, year. you've been doing it longer than me. It's but just yeah. one year, one, <laughs> we're just, one, just one extra year. But, so third, um, so third yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, okay, so we're, we're really excited about um, we're excited to, to do this and, and have this forum to be able to talk to new, new individuals who are interested in the program, but also a little bit disappointed that it may not be possible that we're going to see people face to face, but we're being creative and we're creating um, uh, ways to be able to connect and really uh, be able to bring in new students and teachers. So welcome. Thank you so much. And yes, I see some folks are are chatting, I asked everyone to just share where you're joining us from. So we have Lisa from Cedar Creek uh, in Atlantic County. Hey, Lisa, again. Um, we have Kathy from High Tech High School in Secaucus. That's near where I am um, currently right now. Matt, of course, from Monmouth County 4-H. Kate Neal uh, from High Tech High School. Great to, to see you and have you here. Um, Ariana, we have from Freehold, Fiona from High Tech. I see High Tech is definitely representing. So <laughs> Shelly, you, you brought your people today. You came in prepared. Uh, <laughs> Hal from High Tech as well, and, and Hudson from Freehold. 
Robert from Union City High School. So welcome everyone again. So we're gonna go ahead and um, share a video of our 2017 program. Um, some of our, our, our teachers who are here who have participated in the past, you may see some of your students who participated in our, our 2017 event. And so this is just to kind of give you an overview um, and, and capture what the day looks like for students when we do have this event on campus. But we'll later talk about what the 2021 event will look like since we're going to be in a remote um, and virtual uh, platform for that program, but at least this gets to capture the essence of the program, the goal, and the experience of the students. So I'm just going to make sure that my audio works well. So I'm gonna just do a quick, um, I'm gonna stop sharing really quickly and reshare just to make sure my sound is here. All right, and if you can give me a thumbs up with your reaction once the video begin, um, then I'll, at least I know you're, you're able to hear it. amazing day today. I want to welcome everyone to the New Jersey Youth Institute of the World Food Prize. Um, this is our second year running this um, amazing experience. My name is Laura Lawson. I'm the Dean of Agriculture and Urban Programs in the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences. I'm also Chair of Landscape Architecture, and that may not sound like that has to do with world hunger, um, but as many of you guys have experienced in writing your papers, a lot of different aspects come into addressing issues of hunger, equity, um, and access to um, healthy food and nutrition. So um, I think you will find that when you hear the different presentations that go on, that there's a lot of different angles and aspects to um, addressing issues of world hunger. If 80 of the poorest countries in the world have cut hunger in half in the last 15 years, in the next 15 years, let's end hunger. We're already on the path. We're making really great progress. So the reason we're here today is because we need your ideas and we need all of you to make sure that in the next 20 years, the next 30 years, we finally solve these problems. The issue of water scarcity has made commendable progress in the country in Bangladesh. However, the, st the issue still exists and needs a permanent solution. The negative effects of water scarcity also puts food and ag agriculture in danger. Another contributing factor to water scarcity in Jordan is the climate change. It's predicted if in two decades that precipitation will be more uncertain, making, it, making the soils and the climate more dry. There should be other ways to approach solutions. Um, you know, potable water, bring in water. We all, we all said that there are ways to clean up the water, but we need to come up with something that'll prevent it. Because mm -hmm. if you clean it up and it keeps continuing, there's never going to be an mm -hmm. end. So I feel like that's something we all need to look more into. Right. With being small farming, um, there's a lot of more availability for there to lead to bad farming practices with pollution from fertilizers and pesticides since people want to do the best for their land while they have it. And then once they're done with it, they're like, well, it's not my problem anymore. So my solution for that would be educating the youth more on um, substances farming like cover crops and crop rotation. Eventually it becomes one community that does that one thing and then it becomes national. Everyone will start seeing that, oh, this country's thriving now because they're doing this in different ways and maybe other countries follow that way. You know, there's nothing more important, and you know this, uh, or as critical to the future of human civilization as food security. Our food supply faces critical uncertainties and even large unknowns. I applaud you and your leadership for engaging in the issue of food security and food supply so early in your uh, lives. And I truly hope that you will continue to follow this strand in your own way, as I'll say in a few minutes, into the future. This event gives students um, a great window into um, another country's issues, their, their food security issues, and, and really broadens their horizons, I think. In 2016, I was a New Jersey delegate for the World Youth Institute to the World Food Prize, and that was an amazing experience and life-changing. I met so many people that were my age and wanted to make a difference and help the world feed itself. Learning about all the different countries and all the different uh, problems in different countries really makes me feel lucky to be in this country and um, it makes me realize that uh, our help will really impact other countries as well. 
uh, made me realize that there are a lot of issues that you need to consider when addressing a problem. Like it's not just the problem, there are all kinds of problems around the problem too. Students this year gain a lot of different people's opinions and they could really see, um, look at other people's projects and listen and hear a lot of different views and about a lot of different countries and get this kind of overall feeling of what really can be done to improve the world situations in underdeveloping and underdeveloped countries. When I think of Rutgers, I think of a very big melting pot of students that are from all over the place. So I really like the fact that I saw that today. Then I also like the engagement level of the students. So a lot of them are very passionate about what they wrote about and, and seeing the fact that they actually feel now that they can contribute to helping some of the helping end some of these world hunger issues uh, that really spoke to me personally even though my program is in agri-science so it is perfect fit for the world food prize i've seen that this has great connections for economic classes for classes in other disciplines because you can talk about the physics of this, you can talk about the economics of this. This is a social science as well. So it would be nice if other teachers outside of the science field maybe saw an interest in this and wanted to have their students write some papers and come to this event. All right, so we're just gonna continue with the uh with the presentation here. So hopefully you kind of got a gist of the program and the overall perspective and the, the initiative of the program. And so, as you can see here, the New Jersey Youth Institute provides students an opportunity to get a transformative experience. And again, we welcome students from ninth to 12th grade to come and network with other high school students from across New Jersey and the tri-state. We've, we've had students from New York, from Pennsylvania. We had students from Delaware who have come to the Rutgers New Jersey Youth Institute to be part, to participate in this event. As you saw in the videos, the students are all um, writing a paper on a particular global issue that is impacting food insecurity. It could be water, water scarcity. Uh, it can range from education, economics, um, really human, human rights. It, there's a, a number of issues that students can select from. They'll also identify a particular country that they would like to base their research on. And then they start to research solutions and ways to address these critical problems. When they then join the New Jersey Youth Institute at Rutgers, they present their papers to a, to a panel of experts that are comprised of leaders um, from across the university and different industries. And they get to share their perspectives and the feedback from their papers with their peers. They, get, they uh, receive feedback from the expert judges and from their peers, their peers as well. And they get to be a part of this transformative experience, this experience that allows them to really network and hear uh, what, other student, um, what other student peers have put together in their papers so that they get this really large and global perspective into the issues that are affecting not just their individual countries of the papers that they wrote about, but also the cities um, and even some of the countries that they once came from, that their families maybe migrated from, or even right here in their own backyard that are even impacting the world here in the in the United States. And so this program is a day long program and students are usually hosted on campus starting at uh, as early as 8 39 a.m. in the morning until about 1 to 2, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Again, as I stated, the program that you saw here was from 2017. And so this program was held on campus where we had students engage not just with the faculty, um, the expert judges, um, staff from the Office of Academic Programs and from Rutgers University and from different extension, um, the extensions and also from other units within Rutgers University, New Brunswick. But um, they get to come, they also get to be a part of an immersive experience that allows them to uh, learn about the university and the different opportunities available. Because we're still dealing with this pandemic, we are moving towards a virtual program. And we'll talk a bit about that um, schedule a little bit later through this presentation. I do want to um, tag my colleague, Laura Mitchell, to see if there's anything regarding the New Jersey Youth Institute that she would like to add in, re um, in regards to just the overall um, program components. I think you actually really covered it really well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, so we can go ahead and move to the to the next slide. So for those of you who kind of, who whose interest has been piqued, right? You're like, okay, I'm interested in these issues. Maybe I didn't think about getting involved in ag, um, food insecurity, or I thought really too deeply about these issues, but I get it. I understand how these are things that we need to be aware of or that our students need to be aware of or that our children need to be involved with, right? We want to know how exactly do I take that first step towards getting involved, putting my, you know, my hat in the game and being able to be a student that can participate in this program. And so we will launch our application um, in December usually is where we open up the application for students to start submitting their registration for this particular program. So this there's there's like a two part, well, really a three part um, to this particular registration. So in order to get involved, the student has to register. They need to have a teacher or parent mentor. Um, but additionally, we provide an, uh, another resource for students to get connected if they're not able to have a teacher mentor or a parent mentor. That is where our, our colleagues here, uh, Marissa um, and Matt, uh, we'll be able to provide additional resources and they'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. Um, but students, the mentor as well has to register um, for the event. The one great thing about this program is that a student does not have to, a, a mentor does not just have to mentor one particular student. Um, as you can see from many of the uh, the teachers who have participated in the past and are here on the call, they have many students who they mentor. So they're, you, if you're a teacher, you're a science teacher, you're a um, social studies teacher, I mean, whatever subject you're teaching and you're interested in participating in this program, you can even bring your entire class and make it a field trip in order to participate in this particular event. You don't have to just mentor, chaperone one student. You can bring five, 10, 15, or even 20. We really welcome um, as many as many students as you can bring in terms of uh, your capacity um, to, to be able to bring the students to the campus. Um, but again, because we're virtual this year, it gives you a lot uh, a, a bit more flexibility where you don't have to schedule busing or get those permission slips. Um, as long as a student has the permission to, to either if they're missing your class or missing specific classes for that day to be a part of the program, it gives them more flexibility for you as a mentor to shop, to bring more students and participate, uh, to have more student participants, but for the students to participate without having to deal with transportation challenges. So once the student registers and the chaperone or the, the teacher mentor registers, the student also has to submit their paper. So they will write a paper and we will send guidelines for how the students should research for their paper. What are the questions that they should be addressing in their papers? We'll talk about that a little bit later and we'll also share those resources um, with the students that you can also share with your students as well. Um, the student will then submit their paper. Um, usually the deadline is in February. Um, so uh, we apologize here. We're, It'll be February of 2021. Um, more than likely, it will be the month before the month before the event. So um, the event is going to be, and I believe um, Laura, March 6th, I think is a Saturday, isn't it? March 5th, 2020, uh, 2021. I actually have to double check that. But so just uh, I'll confirm. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's usually the first Friday in March. So I believe that should be March 5th, 2021. And the registration and paper submission should be due by February. 5th of 2021, that should be the month before and should also be a Friday. So students do have um, flexibility and a, and a bit of wiggle room to submit that that um, those papers. And this is why we're having this information session to make sure that you have all the resources and the tools that you need to have your students jumpstart in this process. We know students, uh, you know, for many of you, you're kind of waiting till last minute to write your papers. Uh, but, but the earlier you start researching, the, the more you can kind of hone in on your and, and edit your paper to make sure that you can start practicing, you know, your presentation skills, because as you saw in the video, students, you know, you can bring note cards, um, but you only have a few minutes, about three to five minutes to really get through your paper's topic, the issues that you're addressing and the solutions that you're presenting. So you want to make sure that you're heading, you're hitting every note and every major piece of your paper that you've um, that you've put together so that you can um, get through the mentors and to your peers so that the, the questions that are going to be asked of you will be very specific to the pieces that you've discussed and that you don't leave any gaps. Um, uh, Laura, is there anything you'd like to add in this piece? So I, I would like to say that it is March 5th, so I apologize for that. I think, I, I, I don't know why I'm trying to stay in 2020. Uh, <laughs> so yes, it is March 5th. 2021 
And then the deadline would be uh, the February 2021. And I think you already mentioned this, that it would be a great opportunity now that it is virtual, that a lot of uh, we would be able to have much more participation. Um, and the foundation does give a great layout of how to write your paper from beginning to end, meaning how to be able to research what you need to research. I know we had a lot of questions last year of parents or students calling who were not necessarily being mentored by an actual teacher that were confused a little bit about it. So I think this is a great partnership with, with 4-H that we're building because it'll give us an opportunity to really be able to hone in on some of what they provide and how to actually follow along with that. Thank you so much, Laura. So we'll share we'll share last year's paper guidelines with you. We can share it via Zoom, and we'll also follow up with you via email because the foundation is currently updating our documents so that we can have that launch in in December for students who are interested in participating in the 2021 program. However, the document in terms of the guidelines for the papers will still remain the same. Um, so not many major aspects of the um, paper guidelines will change besides the dates and the submission deadline. So we can share that with that resource with you so that you can jumpstart and have start these having these conversations with your students early. And so, um, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why we think students should participate in the New Jersey Youth Institute. Um, outside of obviously getting our students to be more global citizens and be more engaged and embedded into the issues that are impacting not just the local community, but again, that global community, because um, we need to think about um, all of the issues that are impacting food insecurity. As you saw in the video, I mean, there's way too many kids, uh, children and people around the world who do not have access to food, and that affects their access to education, their concentration levels, that affects their ability to be able to um, you know, uh, grow and be able to get, um, to be able to have opportunities and, and get educated so that they can grow out of poverty. So all of these issues are really impacting our human rights, our social justice, um, our governance. And so we need students to be more interested in these issues, to be more aware of how they can impact these issues around the world and in their local communities um, through their work um, and through the, through the, through their volunteering. And so there's a lot of other opportunities outside of just participating in the New Jersey Youth Institute. Students who get to, um, who participate in the New Jersey Youth Institute Day Program will then be evaluated to participate in the Global Youth Institute that is usually held in Des Moines, um, Iowa. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic this year, we were not able to go to Des Moines and that program was held virtually. But this year, Rutgers is the one program that had the most delegates attending the Global Youth Institute in comparison to the youth institutes held across the US and the world. So just to um, kind of give you a broader, more micro level scope in terms of the, uh, the World Food Price Foundation, it, which is who the, the, in, the, the foundation that we partner with in order to bring this program to life. This program is not just held in New Jersey. There's youth institutes across the US, in Florida, in New York, um, in Iowa, in Nebraska, in California, in China. Um, we have in Nigeria as well, Honduras, in Mexico. So students are getting uh, to network with students from across the, the, the US and the world when they're a part of the Global Youth Institute. And again, as I stated, New Jersey had the, mo the most delegates who participated, who are participating, actually, they're currently in the process of participating in the Global Youth Institute program for the fall of 2020. We're hoping and crossing our fingers that the students who participate in the New Jersey Youth Institute program for 2021 will be able to join uh, us and the rest of the chosen delegates in 2021 in October in Des Moines, Iowa, so that they can get that global in-person experience. But again, that's um, to be seen depending on how this pandemic continues to, to move forward and develop. But the Global Youth Institute, again, allows students to uh, again, part, present their papers to um, an expert, uh, a panel of expert judges. They then get to be a part of a group of peers that are from across the United States and the world. 
Um, and it's really a wonderful experience. And actually at this point, I would like to maybe give um, some of our returning teachers who are on the call an opportunity to share their experience of when they went to Des Moines. So um, Lisa, if you don't mind, or Shelly, if you don't mind me tapping you and maybe sharing one or two things that you took um, as value or that your students took away from participating in the uh, Global Youth Institute, I think it would be great to hear your feedback. Sure, no, no problem, Serafina. Um, it, it really is a, it's an, from top to bottom, start to finish, an amazing experience for the kids. Um, they get to um, sit next to global leaders at lunch and have a conversation um, about real world um, things affecting food security and water scarcity and, uh, and all of those things. And they get to meet like-minded individuals who care about this and put the time in to um to write these papers and to participate and um you know i I've, I've been blessed to have been there a few times now and my kids just can't say enough good things about about the whole experience and about about being a part of this and they they've all gone on to continue um to work on these papers and use the experiences that that they've had in, in Iowa so it's been great thank you so much lisa shelly is there anything you'd like to add I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, that's fine. So this is only my second year doing this. So um, last year I was in Iowa for the first time um, with Sylvia who was in college. And so what was really nice um, was as a freshman in college, she um, they actually put the, her in a cohort with other college freshmen. So it was really great um, opportunity because they were all kind of in the same stage of their life and they were rooming together. Um, they were all in their freshman year. And Sylvia, actually pre-COVID closure, she was a finalist for one of the international internships, the Borlaug Rouen International Internship. She was trying to go to Costa Rica and work on, I believe it was like women's education um, in Costa Rica. And she was a finalist for that. And, um, you know, so many things got put on hold, but so the the scholarships, the internships, you know, she she had a great experience. And, and like Lisa said, you know, sitting next to world leaders from different countries and, you know, just having a conversation was a really great, you know, experience. Um, and this year as well, even virtually, they're doing a nice job, you know, um, trying to, you know, have the students have access to the same resources. Yeah, thank you so much, Shelly. And, and I remember that um, Sylvia actually had um, some kind of conflicts, and, and I would say internal, you know, decisions that she was trying to make about her major. And I think participating in the Global Youth Institute kind of helped her in thinking about what area she may want to focus in because she learned so much more about ag and food systems and these issues um, and how that can be related to a respective major and program at her institution. So um, if you do have seniors who, you know, by the time that we go to Octo uh, to the to Des Moines, maybe already in college, know that there is a, a, a college track for students to participate and they will be, as, as Shelly stated, um, uh, paired with other students that are um, in a similar kind of cohort so that they can kind of navigate together. And then the rest of the high school students, they get to dorm um, with, you know, stay on in the in the hotel room with the other students so that they can also get uh, um, more exposure and, and networking opportunities. But as you can see here, this, this is a three day long program and all expenses are paid both Food is covered, flight is covered. There is a zero, you know, sense really that um, is required from participants. And also chaperones get to go, as you as you heard from Shelly and Lisa, they got to go with their students. So they get to be part, uh, participants and also attend um, a uh, their own uh, professional development um, web uh, sessions and programs through this experience as well, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So again, just to kind of highlight some benefits of the program, um, we've mentioned them. There's a lot of uh, opportunities for internships, taking action in your community, building those leadership skills, being able to do research, uh, gain professional experience, also presentation skills, right? And being able to propose your solutions to global leaders. I mean, the president of the, the, the DRC was at the events last year. So students get to 
really rub elbows with some big wigs and some very important people from around the world that are constantly working on these issues. Again, being able to build um, their leadership skills. And so we just kind of wanted to highlight these um, as, as opportunities that you can share with your students, or if you're a student yourself, that you can see the benefits of this program overall. So again, um, we just want to continue mentioning a little bit about some of the benefits because Participating in the New Jersey Youth Institute leads you to the Global Youth Institute program, but being a part of the Global Youth Institute program allows you to get even further internships, as, as Shelly stated, international internships that can get you further exposed to resources, um, to more peers, to researchers, faculty members from around the country, researchers from around the world and the country that are connected to these issues that can get you more exposure and experiences. And so one of the internships um, that actually Shelly was, was talking about, um, which was a really great segue, is the Borlaug Ruan International Internship. As you can see here is an all expense paid eight week hands on experience for high school students to work with renowned, world renowned scientists and policymakers. And we wanted to uh, mention that uh, Michael Lombach, who was one of our delegates who attended the New Jersey Youth Institute in 2019, was actually a delegate from New Jersey that got selected to participate in this program. And we're crossing our fingers that the students that are currently participating in the 2020 virtual Global Youth Institute will also uh, apply for the Burlock Ruan International internships so that they can also be a part of this particular uh, initiative. But there's other internships and we'll quickly mention those so we can move along with the program. We have the USDA uh, Wallace Carver Fellowship, again, another paid summer research and policy uh, internship, as you can see here with the Department of Agriculture uh, Laboratory Ag Agency at the USDA uh, headquarters in Washington, DC, another great way of connecting and uh, being part of this um, initiative and getting more exposure. Um, and this is a more of a, a kind of governance um, US related um, opportunity. So less international, but can still focus on international issues um, that are related to agriculture. And lastly, uh, we also had, I thought we had another one. Nope, okay. Maybe that was me. Okay, maybe we, um, I thought there was a third one, but actually I'll go ahead and pass it over to my uh, colleague, who uh, Laura Mitchell, who will talk about the Global Guides Program for educators, because as teachers and educators, there's opportunities for you um, to gain some professional development. So I'll start with this video and then uh, Laura, you can pick up once it's over. Education is a huge part of developing good character and moral. One of the biggest takeaways that I think that I'm taking away from this conference is that sometimes solutions don't want to be complicated and they, they can be simple. Um, I think the biggest takeaway for my students is going to be that they just have to open their eyes for what's around them and what's available to them in the world. While we've been here, we've heard people talk about um, opportunities and what you're going to do with those opportunities. And this is one new opportunity in their wheelhouse. Yes, I see that that hashtag teachers matters. And of course, I think it rains so much so true right now, even more. Uh, because yes, you do you all matter so so much. Um, and so I think it's amazing that uh, the World Food Price Foundation has actually developed this global youth guide program for educators because you play such a huge part in uh, the the process of our students being able to write their papers dedicate time and even traveling with them and and mentoring them through this whole process so I'm in the interest of time I'm going to move through these slides really really quickly but I do want to point out that I did um, put the link for the guidelines for the paper guidelines for 2020 in the chat 
Um, and so you should you be able to open it and are able to just kind of see what is expected of the papers. Uh, so the Global Youth Guides Track is, is a seven month professional development program. So we've actually had two teachers that have gone through this track um the last two years and we've gotten some really amazing feedback from them regarding the program uh, as well as they've continued their process because i believe it's a part of of the global youth track that you are to it's a pretty intensive program if you do travel to iowa you're pretty much secluded from your student the whole time but there are they're basically with their own um with their peers uh and their own um and their own guides, but they are teachers who participate in this. So you apply and when you participate in it, you are pretty much in this intensive program with other educators throughout the whole time that you are in Iowa. Um, and so it's a seven month professional development program for educators that includes attendance to the World Food Prize and the Global Youth Institute. So created in partnership with the Global Teach Ag Initiative, whose mission to help expand the capacity of teachers and education programs for global impact in food, fiber and natural resources. And the applications for this program will actually open uh, in February 2021. So that would be for the following uh, or October 2021, which hopefully we'll be able to, fingers crossed, everything crossed, we'll be able to travel to Iowa at that time. Um, again, it's a great opportunity. Uh, we've gotten some great feedback. I know that um, we do like for the teachers who apply for this opportunity to be able to attend the, um, the New Jersey Youth Institute because it gives you an opportunity to really understand what the program is all about before you actually uh, apply for the uh, Global Guide track. Um, sorry, Fina, if you could go. Okay, so some of the benefits from this, from participating in this program, um, and obviously you can see the total estimated value of what they provide for educators is $5,000 and you really are receiving this. Just the only thing that you would have to worry about is uh, just if we do, if you were to be selected, is your flight, but they provide everything. They provide boarding for you. They provide food the whole time that you're there. Uh, you get access to the World Food Prize Warlock Dialogue International Symposium. Um, you, you get resources and instructional materials to advance your project-based learning and global food security, which you actually get to take with you and provide and um, use it towards uh, projects that you're working on within your own respective schools. Uh, complimentary all access registration to the Global Learning and Agricultural Conference exclusive access to curated global guide community or practice with an engaged like-minded group of passionate learners. So not only do you get an opportunity to have this intensive program when you are physically in Iowa, but you get to build relationships with other educators to be able to support each other and collaborate uh, from all over the world. Um, and then it's just, it's basically just, um, it's just education just for you to be able to just be that much more a help just to students as they move forward. And as Shelly and Lisa have mentioned, this doesn't stop with just going to Iowa. The students continue on with their work. They continue on with their passion uh, for fighting world hunger. And that's what you want. You wanna be able to feed that. So you are a mentor to them, not only at the event, but as an educator, you continue to be a mentor and, and through their process. And even if they apply for the internships. Um, so I think that's actually it with regarding the global track. Yeah, I'll just add that um, this this particular track is different than being uh, selected to be a mentor for your students when you're going to Iowa. So just know that if let's say none of your students are selected to go to Iowa after they participated in the New Jersey Youth Institute, that you can still participate in the global guides track and apply for this particular initiative. That is why the the cost of, of the flight is not covered for this particular initiative. But if you are a mentor, our, our, our school will be covering your flight to go to Iowa and the foundation will cover your lodging and your, your food. So just to make sure that we um, distinguish between those two differences. Um, so I'll pass it over to my colleague, Marissa, who will continue with the program. Sure, thank you, Serafina. So this is um, a new part of um, kind of the New Jersey Youth Institute and some of the work that we do mentoring one-on-one, -on -one, the young people. Um, to get their research projects done is we're going to be offering this year a speaker series um, via Zoom, so a virtual speaker series. We're recruiting faculty and staff, staff from the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences um, who are 
considered experts in the field of food security and food security topics to share their knowledge, share their research, and kind of share some perspective to young people before they dive into their research papers. Um, we're, um, we're hoping that, um, you know, you, the schools can participate, kids can participate on their own time, however you wanna do it or integrate it into your classroom. It can be homework or we'll have recorded sessions that you can actually have the students watch during the day. Um, the cool thing about this is students can participate in one workshop, one series, or they can participate in all six together. So it's up to them and up to the timing available. So we hope to have a really great turnout. We're gonna be working with um, these faculty to you know, really make an interactive, interesting session. And we hope that that will help the young people um, pick their topic and their countries before they dive into this research. Um, so stay tuned, we'll be sending out the um, full list of speakers and the registration um, within the next couple of days. And I'll pass the mic to Matt. Thank you, Marissa. Um, so on your screens right there, you see Be a Hunger Hero 4-H. And, and before I get too far into that, I, I just want to, I don't know, I guess address the fact of 4-H. Uh, it's not necessarily the most well-known thing in New Jersey. And if people have heard of 4-H, it tends to conjure up images of county fairs and, and livestock animal projects, which is absolutely true. That is a part of 4-H. But I'm actually looking at my screen right now, and I see one of my Monmouth County 4-Hers, Hudson. Hi, Hudson. And um, Hudson was part of a group of kids through 4-H that actually went down to Biscayne Bay, Florida to tag live sharks. So I share that to share this, that you can do a lot of different things through 4-H and what our involvement with the World Food Prize is really cool. Um, we want to work with our youth and with adult volunteers to help these kids become a hunger hero. Um, we're gonna work with them to identify the countries, to identify solutions to uh, uh, food security within those countries and really help them hone their paper. Um, we're inviting existing 4-Hers to participate in this. And then if there are youth that aren't currently aligned with the school that would still like to become part of the uh, New Jersey Youth Institute, this is another avenue that they can become a part of that. Um, as you can see on your screens, it's open to grades uh, 9 through 12. And also, as it says right there, as I just said, everyone is welcome. You don't need to be in 4 h to be a part of this. Um, is there anything else, uh, Abby or Marissa, that I should add to this? Um, you mentioned that we um, we work with mentors. So mentor could be um, a 4-H volunteer. It could be a Rutgers student. It could be a Rutgers uh, staff or faculty member. And each um, participant is assigned a mentor. And like Matt said, we walk you through every step. So choosing your country, answering the questions in the youth guide. Um, and once you start writing your paper, we'll, um, your mentor will look over your paper. Um, Matt, Marissa, and I always volunteer to also look over your paper if you want an extra set of eyes. Um, and we'll review your paper as, as it's being written. So if we feel like maybe you're not hitting the mark or you've headed off in a weird direction, we'll redirect the youth, um, really to make sure that they get the most out of this. Um, and that they have a positive experience. And then we work with them to create their about three minute pitch that they'll present at the World Food Prize. We help make sure that they get there. Um, you know, it's been tricky in the past figuring out where do you park and where's the entrance to the building if you're not familiar with Rutgers. Um, I think that's about it. Other, other than going through the guide with them step by step, page by page, helping with the paper, um, we really, we work hard to make sure that um, any participant who isn't assigned to a school is still getting um, a lot of attention and, um, and help as they go along. And through 4-H, we've had, um, a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Our 4-Hers have done very well. Um, we have had youth who have participated through the 4-H angle of this um, end up going to Des Moines, Iowa to represent New Jersey at the um, event in Des Moines, Iowa. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think a couple of years we've had kids qualify, right? But I think only once they've been able to attend, either for personal reasons or um, 
pandemic reasons. <laughs> so that was the end of the presentation, but uh, for my 4-H colleagues, is there anything else that you wanted to add? We were going to talk about um, the mentors and um, the youth protection policy, but I'm not sure, do we have any volunteers on here or is it just teachers and youth? Yeah, is there anybody who's participating as an adult that wants to mentor a young person that doesn't isn't associated with the school already or has been doing this? That's a good question, Abby, because I guess there's no point of going through it if not. Yeah. Um, hey, Marissa, this is Caledra. I wanted to see if I could be a mentor this year. I've. Um... Okay, cool. Yay, we'll take you. <laughs> um, but I mean, do you want to if if I'm the only one you can you can let me yeah. know or is would it be okay? yeah um abby i could just she's i work with her a lot and her kids so i can um i can reach out to you and we'll have a separate meeting specifically for mentors to kind of onboard you so i'm happy to do that okay thanks on the side. so i think at this point we can just open it up for questions so does anyone have any questions um laura do you have the preliminary agenda or like the tentative agenda for 2021. So just that we can mention some of the um, the main components that are going to be a part of the uh, program for the 2021 uh, March event. And then if any of you have any questions, feel free to unmute or drop them in the chat. We're more than welcome to answer your questions about the program, the event, um, anything that may have not seemed clear. If you're excited, give us a thumbs up in the reactions. Yeah, Laura, I was I was just going to ask, is it going to be a full day event? Because I, I mean, obviously the kids will be in school, but I want to make sure that I have the appropriate space, you know, kind of set for them if, if we're going to be in there all, all day for the event. So that would be my my question. Yeah, so we'll, um, we'll just see, uh, Laura can maybe do a quick screen share. Uh, okay, let's just give see. me one moment. I'm just looking. Oh, no, for take your time. Agenda. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I think my question got lost in the uh, in the chat when I sent it to you privately. But um, but Lisa, I can kind of start talking to you a little bit about the program. So we're looking at a day at a day program, but more than likely it won't be as it's not going to be as compact and full as it was in the past. So when students first come in, for those of you who are not familiar with how the program typically runs. We usually will have like a welcome in the morning um, and then students will have breakfast. We usually will then move into round tables and we have two sessions of round tables. So we have half the students going into a round table discussions where they do their presentations. The other half of the students are doing an immersion activity. And with the immersion activity they're doing, um, they're putting together meal packets. Because again, as, as we're talking about global issues and food insecurity, um, global issues relating to food insecurity, we want our students to actually give back to the community, to at least the local community. So through the program, they put together these meal packages that we then give out to one of the local food shelters. Unfortunately, because we're not on campus this year, we're, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to do that hands on experience, but we are planning to build something through the program so that students can somehow give back um, through kind of like this virtual remote space. So as you can see here, we can kind of go through the agenda. So you can have, um, okay, thank you so much for those who, who are kind of leaving. I see in the chat, some folks have to leave for an activity. So we'll um, post this recording for those of you who missed the, uh, the last piece of the, the program so that you can review it. But as you can see here, uh, for the, the agenda, we're gonna start at top of the morning at 9.30 with a quick intro and welcome address. Um, we have, we're gonna have our keynote speaker and then from there, we are going to move towards the round tables. So students are jumping right into their round table sessions and presentations. Um, and at the same time, we will have a session for our teachers and school staff on Zoom. So our students, um, right now we have it scheduled from 9.50 to 11 a.m. But once we start getting the registration list of students, we'll then be able to kind of um, hone in and be a little more granular with this uh, agenda and be able to provide more specific times. 
Um, all of the roundtable sessions are going to happen at the same time. This year, we're not breaking the students into, into two different groups. Um, but after the roundtable discussions, we did want to give the students an opportunity to just kind of chat with the experts. So if they do have lunch, you know, anything that they can bring from home, some snacks, some crackers, we did want them to give them an opportunity to, to do a quick chat and chew with the students and be able to speak with the experts so that they can uh, kind of build a little bit of a networking opportunity. And that we wanted to just do a, a quick kind of debrief and, uh, and close out the program by having some of our delegates from this 2020 uh, year be able to talk a little bit about the Global Youth Institute virtual experience that they went through and then giving uh, our farewell from Keegan Kotze who you saw in the video um, where he was talking about getting students engaged so that we can eliminate you know, our hunger challenge, uh, be able to step up to the plate for the hunger challenge, become a hunger hero and eliminate you know, food insecurity challenges that we have. Um, so that this is what the program looks like, but again, we will, we will be um, changing a little bit this agenda, not too much, um, so that once we start getting the list of students and how many we'll have for, for the day. Do we have any questions? No. All right. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, ladies. I'm glad you guys did this early um, so that we can, you know, make sure that everything is planned and, uh, yeah. and, and on the way. Um, you know, everything is, um, um, yeah, crazy to put it mildly. So, um, thank you very much for doing this now. Appreciate it. Of course. And we'll thank follow you, up and send, yeah. And thank you for your participation, but we'll send this information to you. So you have a preliminary agenda that you can use to start kind of working with your administrators and your students to think about what that day will look like. But thank you everyone so much for your participation, um, for joining us today, uh, for sharing your feedback, even when you had no idea you were speaking <laughs> and for yeah. supporting us because we definitely, um, you know, if it weren't for you and your constant collaboration, this, this effort, we would not be able to, to put it together. And again, to my, to my Forage colleague partners, you have been instrumental in supporting our students even when they don't have a mentor and supporting with their papers. So again, you're also a huge, huge piece to this, to this event and initiative. But thank you all. I hope you stay safe and we look forward to connecting with you and to also sharing with you the speaker series so your students can be inspired for their papers um, if they're interested in joining those, um, those sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Have yeah, a great night, night everybody. Take care. Be safe. Good to see you too. Right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Take care. Hide message.